Welcome to Wearing History. Today we're going to go over adding boning to the waistband of the Leslie skirt. This was not originally included in the pattern, but it's a hack for you. The first couple videos accidentally got deleted, so we're going to just jump right into where I'm attaching the boning to the waistband. The first thing you will want to do is make sure that your seam allowance is drawn all the way around with some sort of marking that will come off. This will show you where your boning is going to go. I'm clipping the edges of the boning to make sure that they're not going to poke through and I've cut them to the length so that it lines up right there inside of the seam lines. The seam line on the inside facing piece is where I'm attaching it to and I've made just some interfacing there as extra stability and cut it off around the natural waistline. I'm going to pin this to place and I'm going to do the same there and another one about halfway to the side seam and I'm going to sew on either side. You want to make sure that the first set of boning that you put in will give you enough room to make buttonholes on your machine. So make sure you give yourself some space because buttonhole feet on machines can take up quite a bit of room. So you can see mine is just a little bit from center front, but enough so that the buttonhole foot will fit without making it bulky or impeding my buttonholes. I'm cutting it again here, making sure the boning inside is cut to the correct length and leaving extra to turn under for the bone casing. And I'm eyeballing it and sticking my nail where I want to cut it. You could also mark it with a Sharpie pen and then clip the corner so it's not going to poke through. I've picked the type of boning that you can get at regular craft stores because I want this skirt to be machine washable. That's why I'm going for plastic boning instead of metal boning. But if you want extra stability and you're not going to be putting it in the washing machine, if you're going to send it for dry cleaning, etc., you may want to use metal boning if you want extra stability. I could also add some at the side seams, but I chose not to do that for this skirt. I found that these two bonings were just enough on either side to keep the waist supported. Again, make sure there's plenty of room for your seam allowance so it doesn't get caught in the machine because that will add bulk. I'm now stitching on either side of the bone casing. And this type of boning does come with a bone casing already. You buy it by the yard at the craft stores. Clipping my seams and that's what it looks like when it's done. So again, this will be on the inside of the skirt. This is the skirt facing of the button down version. The facing goes all the way down to the hem. It's the whole length of the front skirt and the front waistband in one piece. And that's what it looks like when it's finished. Do it to both sides and do it before you attach any of the back waistband or the side seams. When it's attached to the side seams, it'll look like this, the facing of the waistband on the front and on the back. And you'll want your seam allowance to turn up. That's why you needed to mark your seam allowance. You can get e-patterns at Wearing History on Etsy. You can also buy printed patterns on Etsy or on wearinghistory.clothing. Thank you so much for watching. Happy sewing!